Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to deal with tarballs in the Linux world. So tarballs in the Linux world essentially correspond with zipped folders in the Windows world. So if you download a folder, uh, possibly for things like device drivers in the Windows world, and you have to use something like WinZip or 7-Zip, something like that, to be able to uncompress uh, the, the folder that you're dealing with, uh, that's essentially what we're going to be dealing with today, only in the Linux world. So the issue that you run into if you're trying Trying to move uh, folders around is that the, the question comes is how are you able to essentially hand off a folder to another person at another computer and make sure everything is intact well the way that you're able to do that is you're able to turn that folder into an archive so everything within that folder becomes one solid file that you're able to transfer and then what turns it into a ball so tar is the archiving the ball is then you then compress press uh, that new uh, file that you've created, uh, take out all the extraneous data that's not needed to basically be able to shrink it as small as possible uh, so that you're able to send it over the internet, something like that. So when you're talking about a tarball, what you're doing is you're taking a folder, you're turning it in ar into an archive files, so that's the tar process, and then you're using something called a gzip, a compression algorithm to then compress that archive file that you've created, and then that's what gives you the ball component. So what I'm going to show you to, how to do today is we are going to uh, basically tarball a folder that I've created with a number of files in it. I'm then going to show you how to actually list the items in that new archive that we've created uh, so that if you're looking through uh, different tarball archives and you're trying to figure out which one you want to uncompress, uh, the easiest way is to actually see what's in it before you do the uncompression. And then what I'm going to show you how to do is then actually be able to retrieve uh, the items from the archive, uh, basically be able to pull them out again. So with that, let's go over to the computer and I can show you how this uh, tool works. So here we are at my Ubuntu Linux server. I'm using 18.04.3 LTS, but what I'm showing you today should more or less work on any distribution and should work, you know, decades into the future. Uh, this is a pretty standard thing that I'm showing you. Uh, so we're going to log in with Bob and my super secret password, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have now logged in the system. I will clear the screen. Uh, and then from here, I will use the PWD command. And this will show us where we are in the file structure on this particular system. So I'm in the Bob folder in the home directory. Then I will do LS space hyphen L. So this is going to list everything within this Bob folder. And so what we can see here is we have two folders, a new folder and a test folder. And we have three files, test file, temp file, temp file two. So this is everything. Uh, that's basically left over from another one of the videos that I was doing. Uh, so what we're going to be dealing with today is the test folder. So test folder is what we're going to archive. We're going to tarball this, uh, and then we are going to untarball it. Uh, so let us change directory and go into test folder uh, just to make sure that there is something in there and I'll do ls hyphen l uh, space hyphen l so this will list the items in uh, test folder so within test folder we have file one file two file three so imagine uh, if we needed the FTP uh, thing somewhere maybe we needed an email uh, basically be able to send uh, this folder with all of its content somewhere it would be a lot easier to deal with if it was just one single archived uh, file uh, versus a folder with a full structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to CD space period period. What this is going to do is this is going to change directory and it's going to make us go up one directory. I'll do ls hyphen l again and so now again we're back in that bob directory. So we got the new folder, test file, test folder and so test folder is what we're going to be dealing with. So all we need to do, the command that we need to use is tar. So tar, so we're gonna use tar, and then the arguments and options that we're going to be uh, adding to this are what are very important. So we're gonna do hyphen, so hyphen, this is going to add the arguments and options. We're going to do C, so C is for create. Then we're going to do Z, Z is for compress with gzip. So we're gonna create the archive file, and then we're going to compress it with gzip. 
Uh, then past that, we're going to do V for verbose. So basically, this is what's going to tell us uh, what's going on with the process. And F actually allows us to specify a file name. Uh, then we're going to do space, and then we're going to say what the name of the new archive is. So I'm going to just going to call it TAR archive. Then we're going to do T dot tar to represent a tar file and dot gz to represent a compressed file so when you look at that dot tar dot gz this is when you're no, you know you're dealing with a tar ball so basically it's an archive file that has been compressed then we're going to do space and then we're going to say what folder we are doing this process to so we're going to do test folder and that's all there is to it so tar hyphen create Z is for compress, V is for verbose, F is for file name. We then give it a file name, whatever the hell you want to call it. I'm simply calling this uh, tar uh, archive.tar.gz. Uh, make sure you put the .tar.gz at the end so people know what it is. And then we're, what we're going to be doing this to is to the test folder. And then I'm going to hit enter. Uh, you see this, so this is the verbose. It's telling you what's going on. Then I do ls space hyphen l. So this shows us what's in the directory. And so now we can see down here, we now have this tar archive.tar.gz uh, archive. Do, do realize here that our original folder still exists. So this isn't some kind of like weird copy command or, or move command or something like that. What we're doing is basically we're creating a complete copy of the test folder as an archive that has been compressed. And so now, now we have our nice little tarball. Uh, let me clear the screen. And then what I need to do is I want to list the items in that tarball. So I'll do ls space hyphen l again, just so I can see, make sure I don't misspell anything. And so let's say I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here and it's like, oh, I've got this tarball. But I don't necessarily want to decompress uh, the, the tarball if I don't know what's in the tarball. You know, is this device drivers? Is this just some, some wacky notes I did a few years ago? What's in this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tar command. So tar space and then hyphen hyphen. So it's two hyphens there. Two hyphens, not single one, simply one. We're going to say list. Then we're going to do space hyphen F. So list is basically the option uh, to be able to list the items within a tarball. Uh, the hyphen F says, I'm going to give you a file name of what I want to see. So tar uh, archive dot tar dot gz. So tar, this is the command, hyphen hyphen list. I want to list the items in hyphen F, a file called tar archive dot tar dot gz. Again, make sure capitalization and all that is correct. And then I will hit enter. And there we go. So we can see that in tar archive dot tar dot gz, we have a folder called test folder with file three, file one, file two. So we go, oh, okay. Um, so that's that that's the uh, that's the archive uh, that I want to deal with. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually copy the tar archive dot tar dot gz into new folder so that I can uncompress it there. So think about this as I'm moving this across the network or I'm emailing it to somebody, something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the copy command. So CP is the copy command, T-A-R, archive. And again, don't misspell. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't get bad. Don't get uh, fat fingers on us, fat fingers. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy uh, tar archive.tar.gz. And then I'm going to copy it to new folder. New folder forward slash T-A-R archive.tar. Dot GZ. And again, remember when you copy, make sure you know what name name you're using for the copy. So if you screw this up, again, you'll have problems. Uh, then we're just going to hit enter. Uh, then from here, ls hyphen l again. So we see the new folder. This is the old tar, uh, archive.tar.gz. I'm going to change directory cd to new folder. And then in new folder, we'll do ls hyphen l to make sure it's been copied. So we are in the new folder and we can see that tar archive.tar.gz is here. So what I'm gonna do is clear again. I will do ls hyphen l just again so I can sit here and make sure I know what archive file I'm dealing with. And now all I'm going to do is extract. So in order to extract, all I have to do is do tar hyphen or space hyphen x so x is for extract, z 
is for, because it needs to be un-gzipped, so it basically needs to be uncompressed, v uh, for verbose and f for file, then what I'm going, just going to do is I'm simply going to feed it this tar archive.tar.gz. So tar uh, archive.tar.gz. So if everything is right here, all I then do is hit enter, and we can see the verbose here. So that has been uh, extracted. If I do ls space hyphen l, we can now see we have the test folder. If I go into test folder, and I do ls hyphen l and test folder, we can see all of the items are there. So that is how you're able to, to archive and compress. You're able to create a tar bar ball out of a folder. That is how you can list the items in that tar ball. And then that is how you're able to uncompress and be able to extract uh, the information that is in a tar ball. So it's all relatively simple, especially in the Linux world. One of the nice things in the Linux world is this is all completely built in. It's been built in for years. Uh, so you don't run into the same kinds of problems that sometimes you can run into in the Windows world when you have a, a compressed or a zipped uh, file. So that's the basics of tarballs. That's how to create a tarball. That's how to list the items in a tarball. That's an important one. I noticed that uh, if you look at a lot of the, the demonstrations or if you look at a lot of the classes that teach about tarballs, uh, for some reason they skip out that whole listing items. <laughs> and I find that just to be an absolutely terrific tool because again, you know, you go into some directory and there's a whole bunch of tarballs in there. Um, and there's, there's a question of like, what is actually in them? And do you want to have to, to extract them before you know? Uh, the ability to simply list the items in a tarball uh, makes life a lot easier. Uh, and then finally, I showed you how to copy the tarball to wherever you want to copy to, uh, and then to be able to extract. As many things are in the Linux world, what I showed you today is what you're going to be doing 98% of the time, right? Uh, creating archives, uh, listing items in archives, and, and extracting archives. But as always in the Linux world, there's about a thousand options you can add to this thing. So uh, make sure to go over to the man page or a link. I'll, I'll put it into the description uh, to see all of the other things that you can do because there are some interesting things you can do with this whole tar command. Uh, but again, uh, these are the three things that you'll mainly use in the real world. Uh, so as always, I enjoyed uh, doing this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.